another interesting reaction coming right now following the former president's indictment in federal court. Some calling on viewers to defund PBS over a disclaimer that ran on the screen during former President Trump's speech this week. You saw it if you were watching the statement on public television reading, quote, experts warn that inflammatory rhetoric from elected officials or people in power can prompt individual actors to commit acts of violence, end quote. Let's bring in Sean Spicer, News Nation political analyst and former White House press secretary under President Trump. Good morning, Sean. Good morning. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. What did you think when you saw that disclaimer? I mean, a lot of people would have thought PBS is the most apolitical way to broadcast. And then seeing that on the lower part of the screen, it might have changed their minds. Well, I'm not one of those people that's ever thought that. I've, I've always believed that both NPR, PBS have, have huge biases. I don't think that they should be publicly funded for a lot of reasons, including the fact that primarily we're in a huge amount of debt and deficit. Uh, and there's plenty of options, including this fine station, to get some great down-the-middle news options from. Uh, the way that the world operates now, we don't need a publicly funded left-wing media organization. But to your, to your bigger, broader point, I mean, here's the thing that I think has happened uh, in journalism today and why a, a station like News Nation is flourishing. I think that, that too often journalists or people who think they're journalists are telling the viewers what they should do or act. And in this case, what's, this is the leading candidate for the Republican nomination who is currently leading the sitting president in many polls. So what, what is the harm before the fact of even letting the American people hear his case? If you think it's that dangerous, let them hear it. I mean, my goodness, we're putting violence and, and horrific scenes on the news in, in many instances uh, after accidents and crises. So you're telling me that these words are that damaging that you have to warn a, a primarily really old audience because that's who watches PBS, to be blunt. Well, and, and interestingly enough, we were speaking, uh, myself and Leland Vittert, who hosts On Balance here at News Nation, and the fact was that there were no protests. There was no, I mean, there were maybe protests, but there wasn't extreme violence uh, as that PBS Chiron or lower third seemed to indicate could happen if somebody in leadership, if somebody who was prominent was saying things that were incendiary. But when did things change, do you think, Sean? When do you think things changed when it became one person, whether they were as prominent as Donald Trump or someone just every day, who could influence an entire group of people to become so violent? Was it January 6th or was it before that? I think it's before that. I think it's been escalating in our country. I mean, we saw that throughout that, that summer of BLM riots where we had rampant destruction of public property uh, and, and many people attacked without any kind of consequence. But it, I think it goes back a little further than that and it's been escalating over and over again where we've decriminalized a lot of things that were, were deemed uh, punishable in the past. We're letting people off our what we call minor offenses. So I think it's incrementally been happening in society where we have destigmatized violence and destruction, uh, looting, all of that kind of stuff, and it continues to escalate. But again, the thing that I find, and like I admit my bias here, but but I think if you go back through, there continues to be a very one-sided view of how everything happens. If you remember Chuck Schumer, the Democratic Senate Majority Leader, talked about going after the Supreme Court. He said, we're going to get you, Kavanaugh. We're going to come get you. We're going to tell people to go to the court. No one in the media had any concern when, when Schumer reacted that way with respect to going after the court for a decision he didn't have to make, or when several members of the Democratic Party in Congress uh, told people to rally around and go after people in the Trump administration in public, uh, Maxine Waters and others. Again, it just seems very selective for a lot of these folks where their outrage lies. Yeah, and it's interesting that there's a blame game. If it we're talking about something like social media, we blame huge corporations that are faceless and nameless in one sense, because I mean, you have to blame all of Meta for what children are going through with the violence that they're seeing and the explicit images. But if it's something political, the blame game gets very personal, even in media. Do you think that there's any turnaround? Are we able to turn this ship around and have docile, sensible and reasonable conversations even in this big, complicated environment? Look, I think you're asking the right question. I, I, and I think there is, except I don't know that that many people 
share that concern. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.